This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. Welcome to building a wooden 3D printer part 2. Today we're going to install the aluminum angle stock on the gantry in order to get the fixed part of the linear rails done. And oh boy was there an outcry when in the last episode I suggested ending the series due to low interest. But just like I had expected, the video did not do well at all until all of a sudden views magically started to pick up. And with over four times the requested amount of views, I think it's safe to say my decision was overruled. The series has to continue. Anyway, the aluminum angle stock I'm going to use is this stuff here. It's 10 by 10 by one millimeter thick. Basically the cheapest one I could find at my local hardware store, which is also why it isn't anodized. Anodized surface would of course be slightly more wear resistant, but it's also more expensive. After all, the fun challenge of the $50 budget for the entire printer was cutting costs wherever possible without it affecting the end result too much and leading to a crappy printer. The first thing we need to do, I guess, will be cutting them to the same length as the respective axes of the machine. I have 4 meters of the stuff in total, and with each of the axes being below 50 centimeters in length, I have 2 and 2 for the Z axis, eating up the first one already, and 2 for the Y axis as well as 2 for the X axis. It's pretty spot on. I mark them all with the respective axes they go on, and the way this is going to work is we are going to cut a dado shaped like a dovetail, pretty much like this one here, along the entire edge of the Baltic birch for the aluminum rail to simply slide into. That way we don't need to cut any difficult angles and use screws or glue or whatnot to attach them. Huge advantage of doing it this way is the aluminum angle stock can easily be replaced when it inevitably gets banged up and worn out, plus the entire aluminum wood sandwich doesn't bend like a bimetallic strip when the wood expands and contracts due to changing humidity. I'm going to do that on my makeshift router table since I still don't have a real one, and if you know anything about woodworking, you will be aware that I can't just cut the entire slot in one go, like it would theoretically be necessary with the dovetail bit, or else it would literally bog down the machine way too much, as well as overheat and dull the router bit, especially in hardwood like Baltic birch, so what I have to do instead is use a generic straight bit to hog out the majority of the material first in several shallow passes, and only then I can use the dovetail bit to recut the edges and widen the slot to its final width. But before we do that, I actually need to take the gantry apart again. I set up the router to take out a centered slot by feeding it through twice, once each way around, and on this first pass we're going to a depth of 2 millimeters. on the second we're going to increase that to 4.5, and, and only on the third final pass with the dovetail bit we're shaving off that remaining half a millimeter to reach the final depth of 5 millimeters. I also have this toy tractor wheel on a stick acting as a spring to really push the stock against the fence without simultaneously adding too much friction since we really can't afford anything to go wrong with these axes. For now though, I'm only doing the X and the Z axis, because contrarily to those, the Y axis has its linear rail on the surface of the wood, instead of on the edge grain. As a result, the Y axis needs to get special treatment with different router settings. And while I'm giving the Y axis its special treatment, let's talk about PCBWay who are kindly sponsoring this episode. As you might already know, given I talked about them in the past, PCBWay is primarily a circuit board manufacturer. 
I recently built a custom controller board for my unipolar pen plotter using their services and the quality of the PCBs was absolutely fantastic. Honestly, I couldn't think of anything requiring a higher build quality, even the spacecraft shouldn't really be an issue in that regard, I don't think. Right now, their prices on 4-6 to six layer boards dropped due to lower raw material costs, so if you need some complex boards to be manufactured, now is the best time to do so. Huge thanks to PCBWay for supporting my channel by sponsoring this video. Okay, here we're done removing the material. Moving on to the dovetail bit, I'm actually going to do the y-axis first, since for the very reason it required a special treatment earlier, it is now easier to work with for the final slot. But prior to that, I actually need to do some modifications to the router table, since I noticed the fence is slightly curved this way, just like the surface of the tabletop itself is slightly concave. And that's not exactly the kind of thing I'd like to transfer to my linear rails. Later. And I ended up making an entirely new fence, which now at least can be regarded as pretty much straight. It's also a lot taller than the old one was, to allow for a proper featherboard to be attached, as well as provide sufficient support for the upright ones to be routed properly. Then, to make the tabletop as flat as I could possibly get it, which wasn't too flat, I simply ended up screwing on some braces underneath, with a piece of cardboard in the middle to really force the tabletop upwards, which means now it's almost slightly bulging here, and then falling off rapidly towards the end. But it's better than it was before, and in this scenario, it's actually preferable to have a slightly bulging surface over a concave one. Then we're off to cut the first side. Very important, keep a constant feed rate throughout the entire workpiece, and definitely don't get stuck like I did here, just to crash it into the router once it unblocks. Fluctuations in feed rate will always result in minor deflections of the router bit, and thus inaccuracies in the cut. Unless your router happens to be sturdy like a brick, that is, but usually none of them are. For the other side, I adjusted the router to cut the slot just a bit too tight, then I tested, adjust the fence, shave off a bit more, test the fit, recut it again, and so on till I get just the right fit. Alright, I followed up with a little bit of scraping along the edge with a carving knife, which I didn't realize had so much impact, this one's now almost too loose, but the other ones exactly perfect now. So what we were looking for is a snug fit, which means you can push it in with one hand, but it won't fall out on its own, just like so. This one's perfect, the other one, like I said, is just a little bit too loose, you can push it with one finger, which is kind of sad, but I mean, it's done now, can't change that anymore. Also, a perfect example of why the router table needs to be as good as possible, you can see here. We went through the layering of the plywood towards both ends, but not so much in the middle, which means the slot in its entirety is bent slightly like this, which is of course going to transfer to the linear rail. A real bummer, and keep in mind this happened even though technically the surface of my router table was bulging, because the pressure of the featherboard pushed it back. I ended up doing all the vertical ones off-camera, since it's basically the exact same process, just a little bit more fiddly, and in doing that I also sliced up my thumb and pointer finger. Turns out, these edges are actually insanely sharp. Anyway, let's slide in the remaining rails and reassemble the gantry. I'm not even gonna bother trying to get everything fully aligned and square right now. We can still do that later, especially since it makes more sense to do it once the gantry is actually finished with all the X, Y and Z carriages plus the print bed installed. After all, being able to adjust and tweak things in retrospect is the only reason why I use screws over glue to assemble it. 
because generally I trust glue a lot more than screws when it comes to holding things where they should stay. And there we are! First half of the linear rails is installed, next episode we're going to build the Y carriage slash print bid, so we finally get something to slide along these rails. Hope you enjoyed, follow me on Twitter at chronic underscore atronic to get random updates on the project, alongside all the other very important stuff I tweet, and I'll see you next time, bye!